Alright, so I hope you recovered from the uh, previous episode. I kind of, and I hope you, uh, it's you sort of understand how VOPs work. If it's not completely clear, it's it's fine. Uh, we're going to use those a lot more, but I wanted to make this part of the course, uh, so this episode, a little bit lighter because I need to sort of explain what VDBs are. Um, because VDBs is something we'll be using in the final shot. And I want to get that out of, the, out of the way before we actually start making assets for our final shot. So from now on, we'll, we're going to start building assets for, for our final shot. Uh, well, after the introduction to VDBs at least. So after that, we'll, be, uh, we'll, we'll start to apply knowledge that we've already learned and add more tools to our arsenal while we, while we learn and use it to sort of apply it to an actual project. So we're gonna then build the actual uh, shot. So with the sort of, with the, un with the squid on the water scene with all the rocks, um, and we're gonna apply everything that we learned so far and add more tools to that arsenal to start creating that shot. So, but before we do that, I need to start to explain what VDBs are, so what volumes are. Um, so let's dive into what those are and how those work. Right, so let's make a geometry node. Let's put down a grid. Let's make it 50 by 50. And not 5 by 50, but 50 by 50. And let's put down an attribute from map. So what this will just do is it will uh, extract a color attribute from a texture. So if we select the texture and go to HFS Houdini pick, blah, 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 and then put it to bricks, you can see we get a brick texture. So I'm just doing this to sort of visualize uh, pixels, basically. So this will add a color uh, for, for every point based on this, on this map. And you can see these are basically pixels. So just if you, if you have an image, an image has pixels. So it has pixels in the in the x axis and there's pixels in the y axis and it has a resolution. So if I have less resolution, I have less detail, right? So it's pretty clear. So right now you not can't really see that it's bricks and if I make it 100 by 100, then it's pretty clear that it's that it's bricks. All right. But what are volumes then? You might think like, what, what, what does this have to do with volumes? Well, uh, volumes use voxels and voxels are essentially just 3D pixels. So I don't know if you've ever played Minecraft, but like think of these sort of boxes as a voxel. I think Minecraft is also vo uh, voxel based as well. So let's make it big. And let's put down a, a point from volume. So what this node does, it's a sub node, and this uh, and let's make a null after this so we don't see the visualizer. What this node node does is it creates a volume from our pick and then adds a point in the center of every voxel. So you can probably dive into this, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So we're not going to go into exactly what so what is happening there, but it's making a volume and adding a point in the center. So Let's, if we make an own, our own volume, so VDB from polygons, from the pig, and to turn off distance and turn to fog VDB. So right now, so this is a, uh, so this is basically a fog, and this uh, this has a certain resolution. So if I middle mouse on my VDB and I and I click on, this thing has 19 by 19 by 22 voxels. So basically 3D pixels. So if I put down a uh, volume visualization like that, and I visualize my density, and if I really crank up the density to like something super high, you can sort of see what's going on. And maybe we haven't talked about that yet, but maybe let's make a light so it's a little bit easier to see. All right. So, 
I'm just doing that to get some shadow casting in the viewport. So, and maybe just trying to get sort of a clear representation of it. So you can kind of see that there are sort of boxes with filled with a value. Um, and this, what this thing does is just add a point in the center of each of those things. And if I up my resolution of like my VDB, you can see I get more, well, more of these points. And if I do that on points from volume, so same thing, zero five, then I get more points added in this volume. So if I, if you see, if we go back and forth, if I go back and forth, you can see what it's doing. So this is what this is doing is just sort of adding 3D pixels. So that's that's just one thing you need to understand about like how, how volumes work. So of course, when you have this thing, you can copy two points because then we can make a Lego thing because that's what is just a lot of fun. Even if it's one of the first things everybody always tries in Houdini, it's just a lot of fun to do. So let's put these two packed. Let's copy a box on it. So now it's a lot of boxes and they're way too big. What we can do is we can copy the point separation to this uniform scale of the box. And now we have a voxelized pig. And it will change if we change the resolution. It will also change the resolution of our pig. Let's maybe make it 06. And now, maybe now where we're doing this anyway, we might as well change some more stuff on this. So let's extract the color. So we already did some of that. So we did the attribute from map. So what we could do is say, to attribute from map on our pig. And it's set to the brick thing, but we kind of want the texture from the pig. So what we can do is if we, let's allow editing of contents uh, on the pig. We, we know we haven't done this before, but this is just to be to extract the thing from the uh, from the pig, because this has some embedded, embedded materials. I know we haven't used materials yet, but just for now, just bear with me. So there's inside of here, there's a material. So this is assigning material to the pig. And if we click on this thing, go in there, you see a bunch of materials. We'll go into shading later, but you see there's a shader and there's a base color texture here. So let's right click and copy parameter on the texture here. So on this thing, so we copy parameter because we need to extract that texture because it's not really somewhere on this disk. It's actually embedded in this thing. Let's paste relative references in our attribute from map. So now we're actually adding the color to it. So now we're getting color. We can check this if we disable the shader. You can see it still looks like a pig because we are just adding the color to our pig. So now we kind of lose it when we uh, when we basically do this on our points from volume, I think, but so we don't have the color anymore, but then remember you can just attribute transfer colors. No, not randomize, attribute transfer. I mean, we used those before, right? When we are talking about attributes, so we can just transfer those over color. Now you can see we have colored points and then and I have a pig. How cool is that? We made a Lego pig. And again, like we could uh, make this more Lego brick-like by uh, actually making it sort of a better model. So let's just do that for now because it's just fun. Kind of diverging from the topic of, uh, of, of what volumes are a little bit, but I think this is just a really cool way to show how you can use so as an example of how you how you can use, for example, a volume as not as smoke, but as something else. So, and everybody just loves doing this type of thing. So, uh, let's make it. It's way too sensitive. Okay, let's just type something in. One, fifteen, point two. Okay, end cap. Let's make it polygon. Let's boolean. Just using some of the tools that we already did, right? So just just union it. And let's just bevel, poly bevel. We're just reusing some of the techniques that we already discussed, right? So 
grouping edges based on angle. So if we put it to 90, we will just go to those and then call it bevel group and copy that into our poly bevel and let's poly bevel this very slightly because it's a very small it's a very small thing because we remember we changed it down the scale on the uh on the actual box by the way we might want to in order to keep this a little bit more with normal values let's remove the uniform scale here and let's just do a attribute create call this p scale because else the bevel won't work if we do that so let's um let's create a p scale instead so copy and paste the copy and paste it in here so we get a 0 0.06 p scale and that will give exactly the same thing so now we can have actual normal values inside of our uh, inside of our thing because it was just hard dealing with these very small values first world problems right so boolean group bevel so now we can actually bevel it by a normal amount. Bound. All right. And let's view. So is that cool or is that cool? Let's make it out. Out. Big. So yeah, now we have a uh, Lego version of our... Uh, of our pig, which is of course completely procedural. And we can change the we can change the resolution. And you can throw this in a simulation if you want. Or you can do this on a simulation, but again, we're not gonna do that right now. That might be in a future course, because in this course, just gonna focus on the basics. Simulations will come later. Anyway, so um so Volumes are essentially just 3D pixels. And right now we've really visualized that in a uh, very literal way by making it into a Lego version of a pig. So now that we understand what a sort of, well, like what a volume is, a 3D pixel, we can move ahead and talk more about volumes and how we can use them. <laughs>